Okay, slipping on my flip flops here. It's Friday the 17th of March. It's about quarter of eight. The sky is still quite luminous. It's not a sky dark, obviously. You can see Venus up there, settling towards the west. And I'm not really getting a view of Jupiter. Interesting. There's some high thin clouds. Conditions are not optimal or even reasonably passable for, for Astro tonight. But I want to try an experiment and that experiment is going to be to use um, settings on the Rev2 real-time imager that will duplicate to some degree what you would see through a six inch scope. And it's not a bad opportunity to do that because most of what we'll be looking at tonight will be stars, star clusters. So, with possibly some nebula. But here I have Betelgeuse all centered in the scope. I just bumped it a little bit. Um, and what I'm gonna do is precisely center it and synchronize the mount and go to, to Betelgeuse before I begin my explorations for the evening. I want you to note that I'm on the least favorable side of the scope. And that's largely because opportunities to do deep sky have been few and far between. And many of the studies I had basically uh, queued up to be imaged were precluded by either the moon or the quickly advancing sun to the north, which shortens the night, or by poor conditions. So tonight's going to be an experiment. If it turns out reasonably well in terms of star clusters and things that we'll be imaging, ah, I might even post this up. Be aware that I don't always post up the observing night's imaging um, because a lot of it is quite experimental. Although this is experimental, but if it turns out well, hey, who knows, you may be seeing it on a Golden Phoenix published channel near you. Our six supposed six inch aperture associated study. NGC 2324 is an open cluster in Rhinoceros, magnitude 8.4, some eight arc minutes in size with 70 stars, the brightest of which is magnitude 10.4. It's located at a distance of 12,400 light years. Now when I say supposedly, this is based on calculations of what the settings of 36 flood and uh, 30, 36 auto gain control would reveal. So basically you'd see something like this through the eyepiece. Although admittedly the stars would be fainter. So there are higher contrast in this sweeping image of open cluster 23. 24. And perhaps we'll revisit it later at a higher sensitivity rating. Okay, NGC 2325 is, is just the next NGC reference in the catalog. It's a galaxy in Canis Majoris, magnitude 11.4, fairly large, 3.5 by 2.1 arc minutes. It's an elliptical 90 million light years distant. And the only reason I'm bringing it in is because this is supposedly what you might see in a six inch view of the galaxy. I think it may be located right there on the screen, so I'll put it in the high contrast area. So there's the view of an 11.5, roughly 11.5 magnitude galaxy that you might get at the eyepiece of a six inch telescope, just for reference purposes. NGC 2335 is an open cluster in Monoceros, another one. Magnitude 7.2, so brighter, a little larger, 12 arc minutes, 35 stars. Brightness is magnitude 9.5. It's located at 4,600 light years. Now, one of the things you're going to notice about using slower exposure, quicker exposure times, 
is the stars are going to look better. Also, you're going to see less distortion as I move around, so things recover more quickly. There is something to be said for reducing the exposure time and slightly reducing the sensitivity. As I said, I calculated it basically to map against what you might see through a 6-inch telescope. So here is cluster 2335 sweeping the field. And you see 2343 is a nebula in open cluster in Monoceros. Latitude 6.7, pretty tight, 7 arc minutes with 20 stars, the brightest is magnitude. I believe it says 8.4, that is the case. 3400 light years distant. And here's our view. I'm liking this idea of doing fast settings for anything that's starry. Although I doubt we're going to see anything of the nebulosity associated with NGC 2343 at these settings. Here's our view. NGC 2345 is another open cluster, but this time in Canis Majoris. Magnitude 7.7, .7, a little larger, 12 arc minutes, some 70 stars, the brightest of which is magnitude 9.9. .9. Looks like it's 7,300 light years distant. A smattering of bright stars with some faint background other members. As it says, there's supposed to be some 70 stars in this cluster. Most of them are probably of the 13th magnitude. Um, a 6 inch refractor should show stars down about magnitude 13.5, but we're Deep into the south, the sky is not particularly transparent this evening, although there's no moon. But otherwise, I'm pretty pleased with the view. Interesting configuration of the stars, the brighter stars, with that V-like shape pointing generally towards the brightest star member up at the one o'clock direction. Our next study is not on my list for tonight. It's a planetary nebula in Monoceros, NGC 2346, magnitude 12.5, but very large, uh, basically one arc minute in size, with a magnitude 11.3 central star, 4,500 light years distant. I couldn't really tell you whether the planetary is on the screen. It probably is. It probably looks like a stoner. Point. It should be pretty close to the center because I did do a pretty decent job of getting them out lined up earlier today as well as last night when I decided to redo it. The issue is whether or not we actually see something of a haze or some kind of nebulosity in association with any of those stars here, but at least you get a look at the field. Okay, what we have here is our first of two Messiers. This is Messier 50. It's an open cluster in Monoceros, magnitude 5.9, 16 arc minutes, 3200 light years distance, about half the size of the moon, so it should all pretty much fit onto the screen. Messier did his observing back in the 1770s and 80s and 90s, I believe, with what would be the equivalent of a department store refractor of about three inches. 75 to 80 millimeters of aperture. The color correction was very poor, but in terms of stargazing, it would have been perfectly satisfactory. However, it would have limited to maybe stars down to magnitude 12 at best. A six inch scope, twice the aperture, and it was capable of stars down to magnitude 13.5. Pretty nice looking cluster has some nice loopy effects in the stars as they distribute across the screen. Maybe a little butterfly esque at points. NGC 2367 is an open cluster in Canis Majoris. Magnitude 7.9, 3.5 arc minutes, pretty tight, 30 stars with the brightest of magnitude 9.4, located 4,600 light years distant. Pretty far south. But it should be pretty tight on the screen there. Yeah, if 
few bright stars right towards the center. Supposed to have about 30 of them. The brightest stars being magnitude 9.4, probably many of the other ones are of the 12th and 13th magnitude. Here's our view. Sweeping the screen. NGC 2367 is another open cluster, this time in Canis Majoris. Magnitude 7.9, uh, fairly small, 3.5 arc minutes, roundish, 30 stars, and the brightest is a magnitude 9.4, 4,600 light years distant. And here is our view. As for the centering on our on Betelgeuse, it was offset a little bit towards the 12, towards the left, probably not much more than three or four arc minutes off. Over the half hour I've been running the scope around, but there's our cluster. NGC 2368 is not on my list for tonight, but I thought we'd take a look at it. Open cluster Monoceros. What I liked about it is pretty faint. 11.8 total magnitude, 5 arc minutes in size, 15 stars. And let's see if we can make anything out here of a cluster. It's going to be right about where the dark bar is. It's not the kind of thing you'd be able to pick out as a cluster. There must have been some spectral studies of the stars in it that indicated that they all were made of basically similar materials. Um, perhaps they did some distance studies as well, but it doesn't specify the distance. So determining that this was a cluster probably came down pretty much to the fact that it's a little more condensed than the normal part of space plus spectral characteristics indicated kindred composition. 23. As you see 2353, another open cluster in Monoceros, magnitude 7.1. Large, 20 arc minutes in size, well, only 30 stars, brightest is magnitude 9.2. It's 3600 light years distant, so you can pretty much assume that all the stars you're seeing there that are relatively brightish are part of the cluster because the field of view on this screen is probably something like 20 by 15 arc minutes. What we have here is another adventitious selection. It wasn't on my original list. NGC 2354 is an open cluster in Canis Majoris. And what I liked about it was how many stars are in it. A hundred and the brightest is magnitude 9.1. Collectively, the stars shine with a magnitude of 6.5. So on a very, very good night, back before there were lots of uh, atmospheric contaminants and without lights, you might have been able to pick it out if you were in the desert with the unaided eye, 13,300 light years distant. And here's our look at full tilt. This baby is down to the south. 20 arc minutes in size, so it spills outside of the screen. It would be hard to tell whether or not this was an actual cluster. So... Our man Dreyer, with his 10-inch refractor, I think eventually he used a 30-inch uh, parabolic mirror, one of the first. Must have picked this out because it was otherwise not a particularly uh, well-populated region of the sky. Don't have very great expectations on this, but it's an adventitious NG nebula. NGC 2359 in Canis Majoris. 10 by 5 arc minutes with a central, well, 10 by 5 arc minutes. That's pretty huge with a central star of magnitude 11. Now maybe they're saying the collective magnitude is magnitude 11. That's very thinly spread. 15,000 light years distant really don't expect to see much of anything here, but uh, it's, you never know what the camera might catch. So I will capture a little bit of this large 10 by 5 so it should 
I'll all be within the field if the go to is working properly. Maybe what I'll do is just do another quick synchronization to make sure that it's to the center of the fully press on it. Let's do this one more time. The camera handheld can cut off on me. NGC 2360 open cluster and Canis Majoris magnitude 7.2, some 13 arc minutes in size, so it should all fit on the screen. Some 80 stars, brightest is magnitude 10.4, 6200 light years distant. We may have already seen this one, but it's pretty, so let's see it again. Very pretty cluster with some central core condensation and distribution around this field of view. Regions without star presences are always interesting. You wonder what may be there, whether there's an absence of stars or maybe a Barnard-type dark nebula. But here is our view of NGC 2360. Using the current set point values, I don't expect to see anything in this galaxy. It's outside the range of a six inch scope. It's magnitude 13.6. In Gemini. Its designation is NGC 2370. And I'm going to sweep the screen, and this will be an interesting validation because we shouldn't see this galaxy at all on the screen. And it should be towards the center. The alignment is pretty good. So that would pretty much demonstrate, well, either sky conditions or the fact the aperture is insufficient, as well as the sensitivity of the camera, the way I have it set up. It. At, uh, 32 flood, 36 sensitivity, it's just not up to it. Okay, my camera, handheld camera has been kicking off on me. I have no idea why it is. It must be some button I'm inadvertently pushing. But here's our second, Messier 93. It's an open cluster in Puppis, magnitude 6.2. 22 arc minutes in size, so it should spill outside the screen's field of view. 3,600 light years distant and fairly far south. But it's a pretty attractive open cluster, as you might expect from the Messier, with I'm not specifying how many stars are in it, but I would estimate there's probably at least 50 stars in this cluster. say, even though they're not specifying the brightest, the brightest stars are probably 10th magnitude. There's our look. NGC 2374, another open cluster. This one's in Canis Majoris. Magnitude 8, 19 arc minutes in size. Pretty sparsely populated with 25 stars. The brightest of magnitude 10.7, 4,800 light years distant you can see it's it is quite sparse and the distances between the stars are quite broad 4800 light years yeah this baby is getting pretty dissipated it's probably been around for a while gravitational pull from other parts of the galaxy you're drawing all of its family members apart just like our modern civilization where people migrate from their hometowns all over the country and sometimes all over the world. And those stars are beginning that process. Another adventitious study, just, just for the heck of it, NGC 2377, a galaxy of Monoceros. On the limits, magnitude 12.7, 1.7 by 1.3 arc minutes. It's a class Spiral class C, 106 million light years distant. I think I'm getting a faint rendition of the galaxy right in this area here. So, just the faintest view of it. I'll sweep the screen just in case there's some other candidates, but I think that's our little sweetheart right there. I would say, Looking at that, that I may be right about this parameters is 30, um, 32 flood, 36 AGC, pretty much representing views you'd get through a six inch telescope. 
and the eyepiece. At the eyepiece. This is the last study on my list for tonight. NGC 2396, it's an open cluster in Puppis. Magnitude 7.4, 10 arc minutes, some 30 stars. Magnitude 10, the brightest. 1900 light years distant. Now, before I. Oh, battery's failing on me. So here's our view. I'm going to have to go charge it up. I was hoping to get M42 with the 6 inch parameters. Maybe we still can. Okay, Messier 42, 6 inch view. You can see 43 there too. It's got that conch shell look to it. Battery's holding out. Enjoy. Carpe noctum. Star forming, vast star forming region of our own galaxy. Awesome.